And now, ladies and gentlemen, please fasten your seatbelt. Welcome to PrunnerCast. Yeah, business cards being swapped, beers being drunk. Can I say a nasty word? Can I say procrastination? With Pete Williams and Dom Gosher. How well did that go down? We can talk about that entire thing in a very another rant and soapbox episode if you want to. Visit us online at printermedia.tv. Hey guys, Pete Williams here for our 40th episode of PrunnerCast. And as always, I'm joined with my version of Barney Rubble, Dom Goucher. How are you, buddy? I'm going downhill, really. It was like we started off with Robin, which was okay, just a silly costume. And uh, I, I, I got a brief spike up to Alfred, and I'm back down to Barney Rubble. Oh, next week, you could be uh, the Tonto to my Lone Ranger. D- don't spoil the excitement and the suspense, really. Don't give it away yet. <laughs> How's things? Cool, cool. Very excited. 40th show. And uh, I, I, I'm just going to tell you now. You've been embarrassing me the last couple of weeks with, with your geekiness. So I got my geek on this week. Uh, after listening to the Max Sparky podcast, which is about as geeky as it gets, um, I was inspired to try out Automator on the Mac. Ooh. Uh, and I'll very, 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 very briefly do this because you just need to go and listen to it if you're remotely interested and if you use a Mac. And if you do anything more than once on a Mac, go and listen to Max Sparky episode 70. Basically, it's a little control system inside of the Mac and you just drag and drop little icons and then you can get the Mac to do anything at all in sequence, uh, like start programs or send emails or open files or rename files or anything. Um, so yeah, I, I went completely off the scale of geek this week. It's very nice, dude. Very, very nice. We'll have to uh, talk off air about that because I don't think that's uh, the, the core focus of our demographic of listeners and what we're here about, but it, <laughs> it definitely does interest me. So, but it's it, productivity. I'm, cro- I'm, I'm It's productivity. I'm, I'm claiming productivity. But yeah, yes, that, you're right. Let's talk uh, about it off air. I agree. No, it definitely is productivity, and I, and I love it. And uh, I think it's for people who want to go and be that productive, <laughs> now listen to the, the fantastic guys over at Mac, Mac Sparky. So, how's the rest of the week been? Some exciting news. We have some exciting news for our 40th show. We do, we do. We're going to do something different from this point on. Very, very excited. After last week's excellent, if a little unscheduled, interview with Steve Cunningham from Read It For Me, uh, Steve made a fantastic offer to the listeners of Preneurcast. And uh, you can go to the, his service, Read It For Me, um, and he's at the moment, as usual, offering a, a 14-day trial. But if you go to our special special uh, address which is readit4.me forward slash preneurcast you'll also get a 10 percent discount on the membership to his service so that was really good and uh, so we've we've got our first sponsor which is amazing um and even more amazing and directly related so look at me staying on topic uh we talk pretty regularly uh, both pete and i love the audible service um for listening to audiobooks. Now, Read It For Me is a book review service. They're excellent, high-quality, in-depth reviews, but they are, nonetheless, just reviews. If you want to listen to the book and get more from it, actually study the book yourself, Audible is an excellent way to do it, and Audible are now sponsoring the podcast. Uh, And you can get from a special address, and these addresses will be in the show notes, so don't worry about scribbling while you're running or whatever it is you're doing when you listen to us, uh, at audibletrial.com forward slash preneurcast. Again, you can sign up for a 14-day free trial, but if you sign up through that address, you'll also get a credit for a free audiobook, any book from the Audible range. And they pretty much have covered, I would say, everything that we've talked about in any of our shows absolutely so rather than recommend yeah rather than recommend a specific book i would just say pretty much if you if you even want to try out listening to audiobooks go to audibletrial.com forward slash preneurcast and sign up for the 14-day trial use that that coupon and get yourself a free audiobook so that's awesome we've now got two show sponsors this week and going forward we'll remind you of those those links will be in the show notes but uh we're, we're really pleased with that because it's not just sponsors for the show, which helps the show keep going, but both those companies have given something back to the Preneurcast listeners as well. And the thing that I love about it so, so much is that they're two services that I actually use. 
this isn't something that you know we've gone out and um, found sponsors and then started to magically use their service. I've been a paid member of Audible for a number of years now, and that's where I devour most of my books, as I've mentioned previously, is through audiobooks at two speed, and Audible is the the solution I use for that. And as was mentioned previously, I originally just stumbled across uh, Read It For Me, and then you know since raving about the service, um, you know Steve reached out and uh, we we made contact and it's really good to have people who want to actually support the show um, based around stuff that we've talked about previously is because we love it, which is uh, fantastic. So they want to sort of say thanks to the community for letting us rant about them so often and give you guys some fantastic offers with some amazing free trials. And, you know, definitely, you know, even if you don't want to continue a subscription at Audible, I encourage you to go over and at least take up the free trial and just get a free book. It's $20 worth of value and all you have to do is, you know, spend... You know, 30 seconds of your time, you know, logging in and picking a book and downloading it and you have the entire book available to listen on your iPad, your iPod or whatever else it might be, your Android Android device. So, yeah, audibletrial.com forward slash preneurcast. Uh, can't recommend it highly enough. Yeah, and I, I too, I'm really pleased. I, I just want to go back to that point, Pete. It's a very good point. Both these show sponsors are not random companies that have approached us or that we've approached trying to get some funding or other freebies to give away or anything like that. These are both services that both Pete and I use and have spoken about before on the podcast and can highly, highly recommend. So we're we're very pleased that we've got these sponsors and that they're giving something back to the Preneurcast community. Absolutely. So... Let's move on to the content, the core element of our 40th show. Yeah, it's, it's quite good, actually, that, that, that we've got the 40th show and that, that it's actually bringing us back to where we should have been because we went a little bit off track with that special edition last week. But you've been promising for quite some time now and absolutely out loud in a podcast, you said, next week we're going to do <laughs> publicity. And I was waiting for this because the publicity is really your thing. We talked about it for the when you sold and resold the mcg and one of the cornerstones of that project was the publicity that you did so i was really i'm really waiting for this uh, because it's one of those things that i think not many people know very much about maybe they're a little bit scared about so hopefully you're going to give us some great tips yeah absolutely and i think that's sort of where the whole i guess um inspiration for this week's episode came from was off the back of the the mcg episode a couple of weeks ago where we spoke about how i sold Australia's version of Yankee Stadium, and, and that primarily was um, really kicked off here through some publicity. And I think the the publicity game, so to speak, has changed quite a bit in the last ten years. And we, I can sort of I may as well walk through the journey that I've gone with with publicity and what I've done, and and sort of share the successes and, and stuff like that I've had, and, and how about it to to do that, and hopefully. Some other people can um, do what I did with the MCG idea, just uh, take the idea and implement it yourself. So, you know, the the way I actually generated the publicity, as I mentioned in the other episode, for the MCG venture was simply writing a press release, uh, a good old school press release. The the headline of the release was 21-year-old sells the MCG for under $500. uh, And then from there, um, went on to continue in the actual press release, you know, a 21-year-old Sports fanatic, an AFL member, is now selling the MCG to the widespread public in pieces. He's giving the public a chance to own a part of Australian sporting history, which is set to disappear after this year's AFL Grand Final, when the rest of the MCC pavilion is set to be demolished. Pete Williams is giving sports fanatics and the widespread public the opportunity to obtain framed sections of the MCC crested carpet that once lay in the Ponsford stand. People are so passionate about Aussie rules, cricket and the MCG, states Williams. I don't want to see a big part of our culture simply die. I want to give everyone the chance to have a piece of the MCG and Australian history and sporting legacy hanging in their homes, bars and offices. This is an exceptional and unprecedented opportunity, sports memorabilia specialist David Fennick of Frame Mem Collectible said. Collectors are fanatic when it comes to celebrities' autographs, but this is one better. Athletes and celebrities can sign indefinitely whereas the specific carpet is limited and can never be reproduced, an opportunity too good to pass up. In addition to the limited MCC crested carpet, Williams is offering a small quantity of these pieces framed in authentic timber that was also once located in the now demolished Ponsford stand, which saw over 30 years of sporting excellence. Those wanting to purchase a piece of the authentic MCG should blah, 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 
For media inquiries, contact Pete Williams on blah, 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 blah. So that was a press release that I, I wrote um, off the back of the, the, the idea and the, uh, getting my hands on the, the carpet and, and doing a lot sort of stuff we spoke about a couple of weeks ago and sent that out to the media. I uh, you know faxed it to, to every single radio, TV and, and newspaper uh, newsroom I could find. I just did this uh, manually and I also then used the services of a media and news distribution company, um, AAP MediaNet, to get it out to a, a wider audience. And very, very lucky that that press release, the structure of the press release, which we can go through today, um, was was good. It was engaging, got the hook, and uh, yeah, the phone just started ringing, and and it was fantastic. Got a lot of exposure for that whole venture, and uh, have since refined the way I, I do PR and that sort of stuff. Um, and press releases, I think, are still relevant today. But that's sort of, I guess, in a nutshell, the way I initially got the first wave of publicity uh, for the whole MCG venture. Wow, that's the thing with you, though, right? I mean, that that is amazing. It's a great story. I love the MCG story, anyway. Uh, but the thing is that when you said that in the MCG, oh yeah, I did a press release with with your offhand and a, a slight waving of the arm. I feel a lot of people just panicked and ran away screaming. But but that I'd really like you to go through the structure of that because it starts with what I think is a fantastic headline, and or you say the hook. And just carries on, and I, there is a structure to these things, isn't there? Absolutely, absolutely. When it comes to press releases, and there are always people listening here today going, "Oh, press releases are so ten years ago; they don't work anymore. It's completely irrelevant." Well, I'm still getting exposure off writing cold press releases and sending them out to the media, and we can kind of touch on that later and some other newer ways to, to get exposure. But you know, writing a press release is still important because if you think about it, all a press release really is is a sales letter selling you and your story idea to the journalist and the editors to actually print in their magazine or the newspaper or put you on TV or whatever it might be. It's a simply a long-form sales letter. That's all it is. So, you know, it's got to have the same sort of core elements as a good sales letter does. So, you know, it's, it's still relevant to learn how to write these things because not only is it going to make you a better salesperson and a better copywriter, but it will also um, get you exposure if you actually send it out and distribute it too. So, you know, the, the key thing is obviously having a good structured headline and hook. And I was very, very lucky that, you know, the whole MCG story in its own right was very intriguing. And, you know, how does a 21-year-old sell the Melbourne Cricket Ground, first and foremost, and how does he do it for under $500? This stadium is worth multi, multi hundreds of millions of dollars to build. So A, why is it being sold? B, why is a 21-year-old doing it? And how is it under $500? So it's a very, very compelling hook that I was able to actually craft for the headline. So that was obviously the key thing you want to get right when it comes to writing a press release is getting that hook in the headline headline correct because that everything comes off comes off the back of that. That's setting the context, if you will, for the release. Um, and something that I, I will sort of make a bit of a mention of it in today's episode, uh, we actually released a book um, about 12 months ago called The Ultimate Press Release Swipe File, which is available on Kindle uh, and in Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and a few other places as well. So if anyone's interested in getting a, a book with uh, 50 templates that you can use to get your business media exposure today, check out The Ultimate Press Release Swipe File. Uh, and in there, it's got a whole bunch of... Uh, ideas for different headlines and hooks that you can use uh, and edit and mold to your own business. So that's sort of a side note if you do get stuck for wanting to actually find uh, hooks for your business. And, and these 50 templates uh, apply to any business and we can kind of delve into that later if someone's interested or wants to send an email through with some questions or Dom, you want to ask some questions around that. But that's the first part of a press release is to get the headline right, just like a sales letter. Then what you want to go into is actually forming the, the, the actual supporting evidence to that headline to really reinforce why the headline is so interesting and actually sum it up for a, a, a journalist who's reading. So it, what you want to do is have a leading paragraph and all that paragraph needs to be is three or four sentences just telling the entire story very, very quickly, just making that um, communication and that painting the entire picture for the journalist or the editor, whoever's in that newsroom reading the press release that's come through. Now, when it comes to structuring the whole thing out, the real key you want to do is try and keep this whole press release just to one page. And I also encourage people to use at least 1.5, if not double spacing, so it's much easier to read. So it's very, very small in terms of the amount of words you're actually going to write across the entire press release. But that's a good structure as the fax machine goes off in the background. 
Let me. Could uh, be somebody sending you a press release. Maybe it may, might be. Is that's the uh, perfect hook there, isn't it? Uh, perfect sort of uh, good timing, but that's the, the the first bit. Then what you want to go on throughout the rest of the press release is just show and prove to the journalists that you are going to make a good interview. So that's why I start quoting myself and actually show that I'm willing to make comments, that I can be articulate, that I can give good sound bites, and that I can be succinct. Maybe if the uh, journalist listens to the podcast, they might realise I can't be succinct and give good sound bites. But in the press release, that's the whole idea. So I really suggest everyone at least quote themselves a couple of times in the press release just to you know, subtly sell and subconsciously sell that, hey, I'm willing to make statements about this and actually stand behind the headline and, and be verbal and put my name on it. So you want to try and do that with a, uh, a good, solid quote. And then the rest of the actual press release is all about just supporting that headline and showing the journalist why it's a good story. What is the unique element of this uh, uh, idea? Why would it be interesting for people to read or listen or, or watch? And then the final element of the press release is simply a call to action. So just like a sales letter, you want to give the journalist or the editor a call to action. For interviews or media inquiries, contact ABC on 123 and make that solid pitch at the end of the press release. And that's sort of, I guess, a really quick structure of how we do all the press releases that we do across the various projects that we, um, that we play with. And there's obviously a few other sort of minor, minor tweaks and, and things like that, but probably too much to get into for today's show. But that's sort of a good base structure for doing a press release. That's fantastic. I'm just going to run back through that, if that's okay, um, because the... the it's it, it's as you say it's a sales letter it's got a structure it's got things that you need to include and these are the reasons there's the headline which needs to contain the hook it needs to attract the people so that they actually look at it open it read it pick it up whatever they need to do it's it's that initial get them interested and keep them reading the leading paragraph tells the whole story so they know to keep reading and what they're going to get you, you slotted in a layout tip there which i'll come back to but um, you, you then quote yourself. I love that. You quote yourself, not because you're egotistical, but, but subtly because you show them that you'll make a good interview, that you can do sound bites. I love that. That's really clever. Um, the supporting information and data, extra facts and figures. People love facts and figures for, for stories. Every, every magazine or newspaper, certainly the radio people, they love slotting a fact or a figure in there. And that's attractive. And then the thing that people, most people leave off of every sales material I've ever seen, um, in, from a website to a, a, a dedicated sales page, is the call to, call to action. And that's it. Headline, leading paragraph, make sure you get a quote in, make sure you put some supporting info in, and make sure you do a call to action with contact details. And, and you, your tip of laying it out with one and a half or double space is, again, great because... All this comes back to who you're sending it to and what their job is. And everything in that is about making it easy to read, easy to understand whether it's worth reading, easy to get the data out of it, and it ticks all the boxes that they've got to do before they decide if they're going to contact you or run the story or whatever. So that, that's brilliant. You've, you've really got it down to an art form. I think and once you have that structure, it all comes down to finding a good hook. And that's sort of um, where where a lot of people sort of get stuck and worried. And that's sort of, I guess, why I put together that ultimate press release swipe fold book. So I thought I might as well actually give some examples to hopefully seed some ideas for a few people. So you've got the, the type of hook which could be the, the what they don't tell you about hook. Um, so, the, you know, the headline in that sort of press release would be what they don't tell you about blank. You know, and some examples there could be what they don't tell you about flu shots. If you're in the medical game, maybe you're a doctor or you're a chemist and you could write a press release with the headline, what they don't tell you about flu shots. And then your press release could obviously be all about that. What they don't tell you about going to college, if you're in the education space. What they don't tell you about bailout bills, you know, if you're in the US doing sort of government type stuff. What they don't tell you about job interviews. You know, if you're in that sort of financial or life advice space, you could write a press release with the title, What They Don't Tell You About Job Interviews. And there's a press release in there. And it's definitely going to be of interest to people who are buying magazines um, of sort of, you know, personal development magazines, money magazines, reading the, the career section of a newspaper. Those sort of media outlets are going to be interested to interview and write an article about the topic, What They Don't Tell You About Job Interviews, because it's perfect for their readers. Maybe you've got an early warning signs type hook you could craft for your business. 
where the headline would be something like early warning signs of blank. And for that particular type of hook, you might have 10 early warning signs of high blood pressure, again, if you're in the health niche, seven early warning signs of an economic downturn, if you're in the financial space, 10 warning signs of a potential war, just general news. Maybe you're a psychologist and you want to comment about something happened when someone passes away or some big event happens in the world economy that actually might cause a war. Five early warning signs of Facebook addiction. Maybe you're in social networking and you want to write a press release about that. And then, you know, you were saying before about stats and facts and figures. There's also, you know, the percentage increase type hook where, you know, how to increase your something by X percent. Increase your Wi-Fi signal by 20% if you're in the technology space. Maybe trim your body fat by 5% if you're in the weight loss or health or fitness space. How to increase your traffic by 75%. If you're in your internet marketing or business growth space, how to increase your sales by 50% if you're in the, the sales game or even in a business consulting game or how to increase your 401k or superannuation fund by 20% this year if you're in the financial advice game. So there's plenty of really good hooks and really easy um, types of angles you can take when writing a press release. If you have like a swipe file, you can go back to. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to forgive you the pimp there for that <laughs> particular product placement that, that we hadn't pre-discussed. And, and the reason is that swipe files for any kind of copywriting or any kind of sales letters or anything like that, but but this kind specifically for, for press releases and, and sales letters, swipe files are priceless. They Unless you are a naturally gifted writer, if you, unless you've been doing it and practice it, then... It's very difficult. It's difficult to come up with ideas. It's difficult to, to, to get started. And a swipe file, and especially yours, which I've looked through, and it, it's I, I confess to having used some of the ideas because um, they've helped me to get started. Um, a swipe file is great. And, and I like the way that you, know, you broke it out there in, in that, that you didn't just blurt out a headline. You actually said it's a type of headline. Yeah, because there are, aren't there? There are types of, of hooks, types of headlines. And, and it's almost like a fill in the blank. Well, exactly. And that's how we basically structured the book when, when I put it together and the team sort of um, you know, helped sort of design it. We um, made it so you, every actual uh, template has a mission name. Like, for example, one of the missions we know, Struggle With, is the mission name. The goal is to write a press release that gives your customers answers to the problems they're struggling with. The formula is, do you struggle with blank? And then we've got a bit of a rationale to sort of, you know, you know, one, one customer, blah, 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 and it goes on to justify and explain why this particular hook is good for PR. And at the end of the actual um, little rationale section, we give four or five examples of headlines and how you could adapt it to different industries and, and business types. So you're not left with simply saying, hey, here's a whole bunch of headlines, go and actually work it all out and, and apply it for yourself. We've actually really tried to delve into this and I've, I've tried to spend some time and, and really give some examples of how you could apply that to different businesses. So do you st struggle with cigarette addiction? Do you struggle with low traffic? Do you struggle with food portions? Do you struggle with back pain? There's four or five different ways you can apply that struggle with type of uh, template to addiction or psychological type industries, marketing industries, date and weight loss industries, or health industries. So I've really tried to break it down as I put the book together for that reason. Yeah, and that's my point. Is that, and that's why I'm kind of letting you off the pin, <laughs> is because a swipe file, a traditionally a swipe file is where you look at the media and, and different things that... that that you come across and you literally swipe it you take a copy and you put it in a folder for reference and you've got to do all the work you've got to look at it and go hey what how did they structure that headline how can i make that work for me but this book it, it's literally it is as you say is it, it's a it's a fill in the blanks which is why i love it so it, it's it's always nearby when i'm copywriting because i can literally just go in copy copy out the structure the mission uh, and the formula uh pick a mission pick the formula out and then insert whatever word for whatever market i'm addressing or whatever topic or whatever there's something in there so it's great but now pimp over um so <laughs> um so people do say and and you know i i have to admit before you and i started to work together i i wouldn't really have thought about doing a, a press release because 
it always seems so big business, so international, so you know national, uh, big companies do press releases, and it always sounded a bit big for me. But who who actually gets these things, and what happens when a press release gets gets where it's going? Yeah, well, well, generally, you know, when it comes to the traditional style approach, which still works, but there's obviously other stuff we'll go into of, of other you know ways to sort of engage with social media and Web 2.0 and all that sort of stuff we can cover. And there's definitely some great things we, we, I want to share. But in terms of the traditional way, which still definitely works, and I think actually works even more now for the same reason direct mail works better now and cold calling telemarketing works better now because so many people are going away from it that means there's less noise in that area. So, you know, not as many people get faxes or press releases these days. So when they do come through, the young journalists go, what the hell is that thing ringing in the corner and go over and look at the fax machine because it's unique. So having a fax come through is actually kind of a good thing these days. Um, Because remember, just because everyone else has jumped off the bandwagon doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. Um, that's a whole other podcast we can, we can delve into talking about that sort of stuff when it comes to um, modelling people and when to model and when not to model. But um, what happens generally is you will email out a press release or you'll fax a press release or use a press release distribution service. Now, there's a couple of different press release distribution services out there. A lot of people might be familiar with prweb.com, which is an online press release um, uh, system and that, or, or platform. And they initially were a way to actually get press releases out to the mainstream media. But over the last few years, their business has has adapted to be very much focused on social um, and web press releases for an SEO and backlink um, scenario and and benefit. Now, I I, I still do a lot of that sort of stuff for SEO reasons and exposure there, but that's not the sort of platform I'm talking about when actually trying to distribute a press release for real-world exposure. Because remember, the outcome of all of this is to get a journalist to pick up the phone and call you to ask you more questions and interview you for an entire article. So you want to use some of these proper press release distribution platforms that have targeted uh, journalists and databases they can hit directly through fax and email. So the journalist, you know, the newsroom editor, will, will see a press release come through in a variety of right ways, uh, will open it up, will read it, and will you know, see, does this sort of sound interesting? Does this have a message to market match? Is it something that the audience of my particular medium, whether it's radio, print, TV, whatever it might be, is interested in and would actually find valuable? If it is, the editor will generally approve that and then you know, pass it back to a, a journalist to actually uh, go off and actually um, you know, write the article and interview you and contact you and, and pick up the phone and have a conversation. And then from there, they'll obviously go and write the piece, whether it's featuring you as the, the sole focus or the pieces around the topic with you as an expert um, you know, voice or, or leader. And uh, that hopefully that gets out to the, uh, the the mass media through you know the, the the newspaper or the magazine column or whatever it might be and and gets you positioned as a market leader and gets you more traffic and gets you positioned in the right way and that's what it's all about it's all about positioning and traffic whether it's web traffic or foot traffic or phone traffic. Cool. I mean that that kind of ans- answered a few questions and raised a few more and, and answered <laughs> some I didn't ask, which is cool because you're good at that. Um, it it to just to emphasize that though it, it is that. We, we we talk about this a little bit, uh, this, this concept of market leadership. Um, but there's another way to look at it, that, and that is that is the, the actually getting featured in mainstream media, whether it's your local radio station or whether it's a, a regional or national or international magazine. Um, all of that adds to your credibility. It's not just about advertising. It's not just about getting people to actually come to your store or visit, or visit your website. There's there's an element there of, of that credibility because you've been featured in the media, isn't there? Absolutely, exactly right. It's that market leadership position that you can then use to increase your prices, help with your conversions. If you show you're featured in certain media on your website, on your sales page, on your brochure, in your proposals, it just reinforces your market leadership position, which just makes it that much easier throughout the sales process. Cool. And... and so that kind of answers the question I didn't ask, which was, was why. Why would you do it? Why would you still do it? Why would you go to the effort? Um, and in there, you, you, very, you started to talk about the, the places that you go to to distribute these things. You talked about using the fax machine, which is a great thing, and, and, and uh, you give your mum a call and say thanks for the live demonstration on the fax machine during the podcast, by the way. Um, but uh, uh-huh. <laughs> you, you were right about the interruption aspect and, and the, that, and we, yeah, talking, we do need to talk about that going when going, modelling when 
when and not to model and things like that. But but you talked about something, and I was a little bit surprised. You talked about PR Web, which is the one kind of PR company that a lot of people know about. You talk about PR and, and oh, PR Web. I've heard of PR Web, and but you you said something I didn't know, which is that they're kind of moving in this other direction, going with the times, as it were. So, what other places? could you use are there other services that you use yourself that you could recommend or that just people could actually just investigate you know about them yeah look pi web still have a, a part of their service which allows you to target real world mainstream media for exposure and, and, and i'm sure it works well although i've never actually used that section of their service if you go to their website today and see that the package that they sort of promote heavily and very much push it's all about web exposure which gets you listed in google news and um on a whole bunch of websites online which which is great but generally they're not getting you a lot of actual exposure of eyeballs they're getting a lot a lot of spider exposure for google which you know has, has its benefits it has its place but for in the context of this particular conversation you know you want to use PR web's main media distribution services which is obviously uh saying they, they don't push very heavily but it's still available um, in australia i use a service called aap media net to distribute most of my main important uh, headlines and press releases and the reason i do that is because they push out through the news wires which is probably a term a lot of people have heard that you know direct off the wire is this and it's basically uh, a network of think of it like an rss reader for journalists is probably the best way to describe it and it's been around for years where they subscribe to this news wire and all the press releases that are important go down this news wire so all the journalists can just log in and and see them come through as they uh, as they get distributed and, and and sent out to the media and aap media Net have access to the news wires um, one thing secondly it's a professional service so when you sort of talk about the companies and the big boys that actually play this game they use companies like aap media net to actually distribute their press release so those press releases obviously have a uh, more of a tie with the journalist and they know that's going to be more credible that's going to be more serious it's not someone just kicking tires so it actually positions you as a market leader as well not only well more more so in their eyes because obviously someone who uses a company like aap media net must know the game must be doing this regularly it's just that a whole implied association thing that works very very strongly when it comes to journalists and, and cutting through all that noise that's a really good tip, actually, that using the professional distribution services that go through official channels in and of itself is a way to get your press release seen. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you, you know, remember, cool. we're just trying to sell to the journalist. And again, for those who have sort of a direct marketing uh, understanding or history or exposure, you would know that obviously sending a, um, a mailing piece in a handwritten envelope with a real stamp is going to get open more than a white envelope with a sticker with a mass, you know, mailing um, stamp, um, you know, imprint on it. It's all about, you know, what is the perception of how that piece of piece of sales material is actually arriving. It's the context of the sales letter. It's the context of the press release. How is it framed? And, and that's that's Australia, which is great for you. <laughs> Have you got any international ones that you've used? Top of my head, but I don't. Um, unfortunately, um, I do most of my obviously exposure through people like AAP MediaNet and things like that. For the international exposure I've, I've been getting recently, it's coming off just you know a market leadership position for want of a better term, but also mm -hmm. being a little bit um, more proactive in, in the whole social media and, and Web 2.0 world and using services like Harrow um, or Reporter Connect or in Australia their version which is uh, Source Bottle. Uh, and it's a fantastic way to sort of embrace the whole way media is evolving um, to find stories, to find um, interviewees, to find experts and how you, and allow you to position that effectively. Because um, Harrow is a fantastic service. Have you, you, are you aware of Harrow? Oh, yeah, I'm on the Harrow list. I, the, one of the first times I ever came across you, I kind of saw you speak in, uh, at a conference, and you were talking about this very, very, this very topic, about PR and about the direct mail stuff and all the rest. And, and the thing I, I actioned immediately was to subscribe to Harrow. And Harrow is, is, is it, it's just really, we're kind of going away now from how you get your press release out into the world of, there are actually people asking for stories. 
this exactly. is this was amazing. I just I just literally I'm tapping away on in the actual conference, subscribing while you're talking, because Harrow is is help a reporter out. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. And it's at and, Harrow. And it is. I mean, go on. So I was going to say it's at helpareporter dot com, and uh, it's a fantastic service. Not to sort of oh, let, you can you explain it, Dom. Let me not cut your lunch. Let you let you. Well, I'll, I'll try, but but, do, but <laughs> I, you you are you are the framing and context master. So I'm going to try, but I think that there's there's possibly something you can add to this. The reason why I find Harrow interesting is because a lot of people don't like to push themselves out, don't like to go out to the real world. Like they feel like if they send out a press release, they, they feel they're standing in the middle of their, their high street or even the in in their residential area and shouting, "Hey, look at me!" Which, by the way, you, you do have to do at some point, otherwise nobody will notice you. But help a reporter out, Harrow, as it's called, H A R O, um, is is great because literally every day, in fact, twice a day, three times a day, if you, you you get an email in your inbox and it's it's segmented out into different publications whether they're online or offline radio tv whatever uh, and and the different kind of markets are segmented out and it's a list of people looking for people to be interviewed for stories it's amazing it's like you just listen i just scan it every I, I open it it's one of those it's an email I get every day, but I make sure I take time every day out. And by the way, the guy writes something funny at the top usually as well, which is, um, but it's a great way. You just scan this email and go, is there anything on there that I can respond to? Can I make an intelligent comment? Can I be interviewed for that? And you scan it. And if no, then you delete it or close it or whatever. And if yes, then if you subscribe to the service, you can actually get in contact with the person and you're literally helping a reporter out. Because a lot of this, if you change your perspective for a second, this is my frame on this. This is my context. People feel that press releases are them pushing themselves. But to me, and this was you helped me realize this, people, people in, in media are always looking for stories. Always looking for stories. People in, from the local radio station right the way up to the international magazines are always looking for something that's interesting that's different that's intelligent they're looking for characters people information on on the new subjects on the old subjects they're all looking for something to write about or put content on and the the explosion of blogs just means there's more people looking for content looking for for stories so you sending out press release is helping people it's not you shouting about yourself um, and that really that was my my frame and context for that, and, and it really helped me change the way that I saw it. And, and Harrow is you just have to sign up for it and see it to realise the opportunity that there is in any marketplace because you just get this email in and it's just this long list of people looking for stories every day. It's amazing. It, it's fantastic, and and you know there's Reporter Connection is another version similar, uh, and you know in Australia it's Source Bottle. Um, dot com dot au and you know it's such an easy way to get exposure for yourself and your business and I actually had an entire chapter written about me and uh, the MCG project and that sort of stuff in a book because the author was looking for case studies and put the call out on Harrow for case studies so I was featured in a an international um, selling I think it was a bestseller I think from memory um, book based off Harrow so if people say they never actually get exposure, I've had everywhere from media exposure to radio interviews to being published as a case study in an uh, international best-selling book. So Harrow is definitely a tool that you want to be using regularly in your business because you can start actually getting exposure. And this is one of the very interesting things I hear a lot is, you know, if you're in Australia or in the UK, why would I sign up to Harrow because it's primarily US-based? And that is true. Although there is a lot of global stories that appear or global opportunities that appear um, proactively in Harrow, one thing that is very interesting is that international people are always perceived as much more uh, intelligent and expert. Think about when you used to watch Oprah. How many of the guests that Oprah have for their various topics were international? A lot of them because you have that instant perception of being much more of an expert if they're quoting someone from overseas. So journalists love the opportunity to actually quote an Australian or a UK or a New Zealander or somewhere else in their US publications because it looks like they've gone globally to find the key expert to actually comment 
on this particular story. So if you can actually put yourself on that silver platter and then help them, make them look good by going for an international uh, guest or, or, or market leader, it actually helps them as well. So don't hold back and say, oh, I'm based in Australia, I will never get exposure in the US. That's absolute rubbish. You'll actually have a greater little leg up by doing it because you're in Australia or you're in the UK or you're in a different international country. Maybe you're in America and you sign up for the Australian source bottle and you, you know, position yourself that way. International people are always seen as much more uh, educated and, and an expert when it comes to sort of uh, credentials and things like that. That's a great tip. I love that tip. It's so true as well. It's so true. So many people are sat there going, oh, well, you know, that's in England and I'm in Australia and they won't be interested. But really, seriously, this little, whatever the publication is, that's, that's, if it's solely in the UK, then, then they go, hey, wow, have we got this expert from Australia? It's all, it's that context again, isn't it? It's that, what's fra- sorry, framing. Yep. It's framing again. Absolutely. It, and, 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 um, Something I, I've got this. I have this big thing about perspective, and I've kind of wobbled on about it already once. But your perspective, when you look at this, you can't look at it from your perspective. You need to look what you're going to try to get out of it. But you need to look at it from their perspective. You are helping them. You are providing something positive for all these different media outlets. Um, so get involved. Get out there because as you as you've demonstrated, it's not just you're not just saying it. You've demonstrated that with a little bit of effort. And it really is. I'll, I'll ask you this in a second, but I know it's a little bit of effort. You can get international coverage. Exactly yeah. right. And you can be featured in a book. And you could be featured in a book too. If you don't write your own, you can be featured in someone else's. <laughs> um, but seriously, though, I mean, how, how hard is this, really? I mean, because that, that's the thing. Most people, you say press release and they run screaming in the other direction because it sounds all big business and all difficult and expensive and blah, 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 blah. Well, look, I think you, if you go down the, you know, the traditional press release path, you know, the hardest part is obviously coming up with the hook and writing the press release. But once you get the hook, the press release itself kind of flows once you have a bit of a framework and checklist, <laughs> to go back to another episode we spoke about, of what you should include in a press release's layout, which is sort of covered at the top of the show. But if you had some sort of swipe file or just reference you could actually use for press releases, you could be writing these very, very regularly, very, very easily, and then getting them out through these distribution services. It can be part or one of the tasks you do in your critical focus time. Do again you know, mentioned in previous episodes about having that critical focus time in your business. And one of those elements is I'm going to write a press release every Wednesday at 1 p.m. in my 40 minutes of critical focus time. So that's very, very easy. When it comes to using Harrow and stuff, that's even easier. You go to the website, helperreporter.com, you enter your email address, and you wait for opportunities to come to you and then simply fill out a form saying, yeah, look, I think I, I match exactly what you're looking for. I have experience in X, Y, and Z, and, and here's a quick sound bite that I think could go well. If you want more information, let me know. Here's my contact details. Love Toto, or Tonto, or The Lone Ranger, or Barney Rubble, whatever it might be. <laughs> and Pre- Preferably your real name, though. Well, seriously. True. But it, it's very, very <laughs> easy to do that. It's, just, it's not hard. You've got to be very proactive about it and make it part of your critical focus time to do on a, on a weekly, monthly, or daily basis. In, and in terms of what one of one of our, our favorite words on this podcast, in terms of leverage, if you look at the amount of time and effort it takes you, if you use one little critical focus time unit uh, a day or even a week, that amount of time spent filling out, creating a good, crafting a, a, a press release and getting it out to these services, the exposure you can receive from maybe 25 minutes worth of work it is amazing. The leverage of that time versus the result is phenomenal. Um, for any business, for any business, there's an opportunity for just pretty much any business at the right level to, to, to use press releases to get yourself out there, both to promote your business directly, but more as the point Pete, Pete and I are trying to make here, to, to make you to grow your market leadership, to grow your authority in a marketplace, which has that knock-on effect that you can charge more, you're getting more exposure, you get more respect, all those positive things. And it all comes from just putting out a press release and getting, eventually, you will get featured. You know, I know I know the most random of people that have been picked up and featured, as you say, in books, whole chapters or segments, national newspapers, local radio. Um, 
and once you get going and once you get into the swing of it it's it's fantastic absolutely absolutely so can we uh i mean we're, we're about on time here can let's let's wrap it up uh i guess i know what your what your action step for the for the week's going to be but 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 let's have our our action action point for the week with with uh with pub getting out a press release yeah well look i think the action point for this week should be uh going to helperreporter.com sourcebottle.com.au something like that and subscribing it's a very low friction way to get started and dip your toe in this publicity world very very easy to get that exposure but it's getting on those mailing lists um that's sort of i guess the real key action step that i want everyone to take this week off the back of today's episode cool now i have actually I, I like to put a little tech tip just to, to try and reclaim my geekiness. Um, but this week's tech tip is, is actually a low tech tip because I, I love this tip so much. And that is if you do get to the point where you're sending out press releases uh, and you're doing it yourself manually, as it were, um, Pete's tip of using the fax machine is really, really quite powerful. As you, as you heard with our live demonstration in the show, <laughs> fax machines make... Uh, uh, are quite distinctive objects and they're not used very much so when one rings and a piece of paper comes out of it people will stand up they'll stop what they're doing you know you could send a thousand emails a day and no one would look at it because they've already got a thousand emails that day but if you send a fax and that box in the corner rings the whole office will stop um so there's my my retro tech tip for the week i love it mate i love it kim Asabi. <laughs> Okay, cool, mate. I, that's an, that's excellent. I I love I love these 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 shows because it's it's something I was afraid of, uh, and I'm thinking there are people out there that also were probably either afraid of it or weren't aware of it or didn't realise how easy it could be or why they should even be interested. So I, I I'm really I like this show. I'm, I'm pleased with this show. But uh, let's wrap it up there. It uh, we're on time. Quick, quick, get off. We're on time. Uh, <laughs> Sounds good. We'll see you next week. I think next week, from memory, if my memory serves me correctly, next week we're talking about influence factors and we're going to go through Robert Cialdini's book, Influence, uh, and talk about influence factors, the ones that he covers in the book, and how to actually apply them um, as, a, as a filter or as a, as a checklist in your marketing. We'll kind of use some examples there because I know we touched on that as well during the MCG, re, how I resold the MCG episode. So we'll... Uh, We'll reinforce and cover some of that stuff in depth on next week's episode. So looking forward to seeing you all next week. Definitely, folks. And don't forget, we're going to be talking about the Cialdini book, Influence, which just lets me go nicely full circle back because I'm new to the sponsorship thing. But don't forget that you can go to read it for me. Uh, Read it for dot me. I'll get that right. Read it for dot me slash preneurcast. And you can sign up to the read it for me book review service uh, with a discount if you use our code uh, and that will let you review any of the books that we talk about on the show um, someone else has actually reviewed the books and produces a fantastic uh, almost multimedia review of uh, most of the books that we talk about and the best and thing is if, sorry to interrupt you there on that page when you go to read it for dot me forward slash preneurcast dom and i have actually done an exclusive video which goes for a few minutes, and we actually walk you through what the membership area is like. So you actually can see the visual video summaries that are available inside there. You can look at the, the audio versions, if you can look at the audio versions. But you also get to check out the PDFs and all the action guides and stuff that we spoke about. We actually walk you through that to give you actually a taste and a look inside the membership portal because, you know, obviously this being an audio-based platform uh, as a podcast, you, you can't see and, and feel and, and really see how engaging these summaries are. So we've made that available for you uh, on the page over at readitfor.me forward slash preneurcast. Yep, and it's a 14-day free trial anyway. So watch the video, and if it's uh, if you're interested, and I would hope you would be, sign up for the 14-day free trial with our code. Uh, and you'll get yourself a little discount there. Thank you to Read It For Me for that. And as I was going to say, if there's a book that you're interested in, if we mention it and you want to get more in-depth with that book, we both listen extensively to audiobooks using Audible. Uh, and Audible also have an offer for you. 
uh, for Preneurcast listeners at audibletrial.com forward slash Preneurcast. You can get a 14 day free trial, but also a coupon to get your own free uh, edition of one of the books that they have in their store. And they've got over 100,000 titles. It's Yeah, it's huge. Honestly, it's like, as I, said, as I said at the beginning, I think everything we've talked about is in there pretty much. So there's our, there's our kind of new sponsors, new shiny sponsors for the 40th show. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening for 40 shows. Um, thank you all for all the feedback that you've given us. Uh, keep that feedback coming, uh, both on preneurmedia.tv and on the iTunes store. Let us know if you enjoyed this show or any of our shows and if there's something that you want us to talk about. We do take all of the feedback and we try and include it as a show topic if we can. Uh, and otherwise, as most people will attest, we will respond to that email if you email us uh, and try and help you out directly. So uh, do give us some feedback. We're looking forward to it. And uh, I've just taken us over time. So uh, see you next week, mate. Ciao, guys. <laughs> been enjoying another fine episode of PrinterCast with Pete Williams and Tom Gosher. Make sure to hang out with the boys online at printermedia.tv or drop them a line via printercast at printergroup.com.